Due to mature content manner, viewer discretion is advised. Now don't get me wrong guys, I love all things Japanese, but I consider my first real love actually American football. I used to play ball when I was in high school, and I played ball, unfortunately not at the uh, collegiate level, but uh, I played uh, intramural sports all throughout my collegiate years, and I have a healthy obsession with the NFL, the NCAA, and everything football. But recently, I've been thinking about something. Why is it that, at least in America, when people talk about football and have a healthy knowledge of football, you know, other guys will give them a pat on the back and you can easily make friends with them. But recently, I came across an article on my favorite Japanese store, uh, jlist.com, and the owner of the site posted a really interesting question. Look what you see in this room. You see Michael Strahan, Lawrence Taylor, Phil Simms jerseys hanging on the wall. I don't know who number 70 is. I'm not a Giants fan. Go Eagles. Um, you see New York Giants helmets, three of them. You got a freaking New York Giants couch, two easy, three easy chairs, and turf on the wall. Or maybe this room, you see a Donovan McNabb and a Deshaun Jackson fathead on the wall. Again, you got the Eagles easy chairs. You got Eagles carpeting. You got a Deshaun jersey sitting on the floor. I mean, this is like an ultimate Eagles man cave where the, any good Philadelphia Eagles fan could sit. Again, is this healthy as a Philadelphia Eagles fan? I would say yes, because I would kill to have that room. I really would. I'd be down there all the freaking time, every Sunday. Which leads to the next problem. That so, look at this room. What do you see? Well, you see some half-dressed anime girls on the wall. You see more models than a little kid has, and... There's manga and movies and CD, CDs. I'm assuming there's video games in here also. And it leads me to this question. Is this considered healthy? Judging where I come from in the United States, a lot of people would be very creeped out about this. Probably because the girls are just 2D. They're not real. Don't get me wrong, everybody has their own sexual preferences. For me, I like 3D women. And yeah, I like women who are real. But I know some people get their rocks off to 2D girls and they'll spend hours in their room fantasizing over hand-drawn women. There's just no better way to put it. Or look at this room also. There's a lot of DVDs, more uh, models, posters, and, you know, it makes you wonder, if you have no background with Japanese culture, what sort of person would have this kind of room? And why would they blow their money on stupid shit like this? Well, today we're going to be talking about a scourge to all people who love Japanese. Weeaboos. Again, due to the content nature of this episode, viewer discretion is advised. Um, if you don't like sexualized photos, I would advise you to skip over this part of the episode now. So what's a weeaboo? This tub of goo is a weeaboo. This lonely virgin right here is a weeaboo. This Snorlax sized woman is a weeaboo. This neck beard is also a weeaboo. Even your Japanese grandpa, he's also a weeaboo too. My first encounters with a weeaboo was actually back when I first got into the University of North Texas. 
as a 19 year old, I walked into Japanese class for the first time. And remember, before I went to UNT, I went to a community college with the majority of my former classmates from high school. So really, this was my first time being alone away from Flower Mound High School and North Lake Community College. And when I first stepped into my Japanese class, Japanese 101 with a uh, Soishima Yumi Sensei, I was a little freaked out with what I saw. I saw a girl with the kitty ears, a girl with a Naruto headband, another girl with a Pikachu jacket. And I thought to myself, oh my fucking God, what the hell did I get myself into? And of course, it didn't help that I came in that day wearing a Philadelphia Eagles jersey and a backwards Philadelphia Eagles hat. So of course, a lot of these weeaboos thought, oh my God, a jock thinks he can learn Japanese. Now, just to go back a little further, I consider myself no jock. I can't bench press 500 pounds. I can't squat 500 pounds. I, I am not, Her I'm not Hercules. I just like sports because it keeps me healthy and, you know, it keeps me competitive. Unfortunately for these weeaboos, jocks and a lot of the other uh, higher uh, high school people on the social strata look down on weeaboos as fucking weirdos. And... I apologize for that. There's actually construction outside my apartment. Um, anyway, going back to what I was saying, these weeaboos will do anything for attention. They'll dress up as anime characters at school, like I see in this, like I saw in this class. But the biggest weeaboo of all happened to be the girl who was supposedly the head of the anime club at that time at UNT and I'll never forget her name but I'll only tell you her first name her name was Morgan and she comes over and looks at me and she said to me sir I think you're in the wrong classroom this is not where uh, football class is and I said honey I'm in Japanese class and she's like you a jock think you can learn Japanese that's Adi and I and I look at her like, Adi and I? Seriously? You don't think a jock can learn Japanese? She's like, no, because jocks are stupid. And I look at this girl and I'm like, okay. I'm like, okay, you're entitled to your opinion. So class started and Soishima Sensei uh, took out her PowerPoint and she uh, calls to the class, can anyone read this? Can anyone, does anyone want to try and read this? Of course, Morgan tries to read this, and she doesn't even get past the fifth character of Japanese. So I volunteer, and I finish the complete passage perfectly. Because remember, when I was in high school, I actually took a private Japanese tutor. And Maeda Sensei really inspired me so much during that time to do Japanese, I actually forewent a football i pretty much gave up football as my passion and pursued japanese full-time of course the entire class was shocked that a six foot four 225 pound former football player could speak japanese really well and to be fairly honest my japanese sucked during that time it still does but i'm a lot better off than where i was five years ago and I remember after class, Morgan's like, oh yeah, well, you got lucky. You got lucky. I said, luck had nothing to do with it, babe, because I studied Japanese all throughout my junior and senior years at high school. You probably haven't even opened a Japanese textbook until today. She's like, oh yeah? Well, I bet I can score better than you on the next test. So I look at her, I'm like, okay, I'll make you a little deal. If I score better than you, no. If I fail to get a 100 on the first Japanese test, I'll give up Japanese. But if you lose, you have to give up Japanese and you have to apologize to me in front of the entire class. 
So we shook hands. She said, you're on. And of course, the day of the first test came. And needless to say, thanks to my two years of study under Maeda Sensei, I actually scored a 120 on my exam because I went for the extra credit also. She barely even broke a 40. So, of course, I said, well, where's my apology? Where's my apology, bitch? And, of course, she didn't apologize to me. She left the class. And she dropped out, as did most of the other weeaboos in that class, too. I remember that there was about 25, 30 students in Japanese 101 when they start, when the class started. But as the semester went on, it dropped down to 10. And I also noticed as my years went by at UNT for Japanese, the classes continued to get smaller and smaller and smaller. Of course, this also led to other rivalries with other weeaboos, or I wouldn't even call them weeaboos. They're, they're actually damn good at Japanese, and I consider them worthy rivals. But that's another story for another time. Anyway, let's, let's look at what a weeaboo is. Now, a weeaboo is usually a Western person who pretends to be Japanese, usually in the most exaggerated way possible. Like I said, they dress up like the anime or the manga character, game characters also, and most of them can't speak Japanese. There is a very small few that think they speak Japanese, but they don't, because most Early Japanese learners learn Japanese through romaji, which is the Japanese alphabet through Roman characters. I don't recommend people learning Japanese through this because it provides a crutch. You're much better off learning hiragana and katakana first. The third thing I think is a bit obnoxious. They eat ramen noodles for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. That's sort of a stereotype, but I digress. They refuse to go to school because the Western school year does not correlate with the Japanese school year. Again, that's ridiculous because, you know, Japanese uh, college life and American college life is very different. The American college year starts in September, August or September, depending on the school. And the Japanese school year always starts in April. And again, that's kind of ridiculous. But I do, rec I do agree with this next one. They masturbate to hentai. And hentai is animated porn. I have seen some hentai. And to be honest, I don't think it's fun to watch. I actually think it's rather creepy. Um, another thing that... A that makes a weeaboo a weeaboo is that they get really upset when you call an anime a cartoon. And guess what? To upset weeaboos at UNT, I have done this. And they go on a little hissy fit that I know jack shit about Japanese culture. But then again, let's look at this. This pretty much sums up weeaboo. They think they know Japanese culture, but they can't tell you the most basic things about Japan. Like, say, the Prime Minister, or something really basic like that. Other characteristics of weeaboos also include the fact that they will see Japan as some sort of holy land. And of course, being here in Japan for nearly two years, I never thought this about Japan. I just saw, J I see Japan as another country that has its own problems. Shit, that's why I'm doing this uh, podcast. But you know, Weeaboos will net most weeaboos will never go to Japan. They never have, they never will, and they never can. Because they spend all their time masturbating the hentai. Another thing that weeaboos do is they will put down other forms of visual media, mainly Western animation. I love Family Guy with a passion, and it pisses the hell out of me when some weeaboo thinks that One Piece or Inuyasha is better than. Family Guy. No, Inuyasha sucks. I'm sorry, but Inuyasha is so old and it it bores the hell out of me. Another thing that uh, weeaboos also do is 
they think that they can get all their knowledge about Japan from anime or manga. Again, this is not the case. There's a lot of things I would have never known about Japan that you'll never see in anime or manga. And that's why I'm so pissed that, you know, people say, you know, I know everything about Japan because I know it through anime or manga. Bullshit. You don't know squat about Japan. You don't know shit. Also, another thing that weeaboos do really well is they piss the shit out of everyone. A few times when I was in class, particularly my Japanese class, whenever people would just go off on rants about Inuyasha or at that time, what was really popular was, uh, again, not really an anime, but My Little Pony or uh, Ghost to Show You. I didn't really pay attention to anime or manga throughout my college years, at least until I went to Kansai Gadai and I found stuff that I liked. But, you know, the point is, you never piss the shit out of people with your opinions. And if someone disagrees with you, you go off and turn into little miss bitchy princess or little mister i i don't know but you just don't go off into rants about why you're wrong and i'm right and of course while i'm doing this podcast i also have to keep that in mind i know i'm not right and i know i'm not wrong it's just my opinion i guess you could say i'm sort of an otaku but Again, there are different forms of otaku as well, and we'll dive into that into another episode. But weeaboos are just fucking crazy people. They are. To close out this episode, we'll uh, talk about one final thing that it seems most weeaboos mm -hmm. all go through. And that is the lack of sex or a lack of a physical intimate relationship. For myself, when I was in college, I really didn't have much of any, uh, well, I'll just be frank. I didn't have much of a sex drive for my first two years of college. I just didn't have the time. I was studying and trying to figure out ways how to get to Japan. And I was just busy. Homework, uh, intramural sports. I was also doing karate full time. I actually won a good amount of tournaments when I was, uh, back in college, but I digress. Needless to say, I liked women, real women. But also, when, whenever I would just go to Japanese class or just see all the other weeaboos hanging out on campus, it never ceased to amaze me that, you know, some of these guys would just talk about which anime character they'd like to have sex with or who was hotter. And I'm like, dudes, they're fake. They're cartoon characters. That's all they are. I mean, you can fantasize as much as you want, but it's never going to happen. They're just not real. And there was this one guy at my dormitory that I'll never forget, and I'll only say his first name. His name was Greg. And I don't know why he tried to hang out with me, but I would always try to avoid him because he was too much of a weeaboo for his own good. And the times that I unfortunately hung out with him, all he would talk about was just why, you know, my favorite anime of like Dragon Ball or Hokuto no Ken or any of the classic 1990s or late 1980s anime were just so stupid and why I should get involved with more modern anime. And of course, that was never going to happen because I didn't have much of a... Uh, fascination with it. And I guess, needless to say, um, this made me very unpopular with the majority of the students in the Japanese class. However, I did manage to make a few good friends in the later classes that I had after all the weeaboos were weeded out. So I guess, long story short with weeaboos, they're just lonely people looking for attention and they're looking to escape to some sort of alternate reality, to run away from their problems in real life, and they're finding it in the form of Japanese animation or video games or, I, I don't know. And, you know, it 
if you have an unhealthy obsession with something, I mean, you seriously should go get your head checked. I mean, there's, it's not right to fantasize over a 2D character that, that's just not real. But you know what? That's, uh, that'll do it for this episode. Um, my name is Naoi Keiji. This is the Kabukimono Chronicles. And also, I've been meaning to tell you guys, I actually came up with the slogan for the show. So to close out, I'll just say the uh, slogan. This was the Kabukimono Chronicles. Real Japan, no bullshit. This is Naoi Keiji signing off. And next week, we will have uh, Mr. Goto Goto Roller come in. And we are going to talk about a lot of shit. And I think we're mainly going to talk about the, uh, the time we had in Hokkaido prison together. So, real Japan, no bullshit. This is the Kabukimono Chronicles. Sayonara, yo!